May all donations be possessed. With that, the title for today is A Christian Who Is Like a Christian. Hello, dear members of Yuan Church. This Sunday, we are meeting through the video. Currently, a mission camp is taking place in Indonesia, so let's greet each other in Indonesian. The first greeting of the morning is Salamat Pagi in morning, and in the afternoon, it's Salamat Siang. At this time, all those who are giving the 10 o'clock service may be able to say Salamat Pagi, and for those who are giving the afternoon worship, Salamat Siang. In the year 2023, upon the year of missions, I've given the pulpit message by video, and now it is the second time doing so in Indonesia. So we have greeted each other in Indonesia to relay that feeling of Indonesia. During this week, in the Bali mission field, the camp team bore witness of the gospel through relational evangelization. As Indonesia guarantees religious freedom, it can be challenging for foreigners to directly proclaim the gospel due to the potential issues related to blasphemy. If they feel that they have been subject to this, they may report it to the immigration office and thus this could hinder the local ministries. So for missionary Chang, how she does ministry is by the relational ministry. Therefore, the camp was connected, primarily focusing on the building relationships with the local community. On Wednesday, the camp team took place in an orphanage in Blumbing, Surrey which is located in a Christian village where a joint worship service was held at an invited church. It is an early church and a Balinese ethnic church. Then on Thursday, the leadership training seminar LTS was conducted where I delivered a special lecture there conveying God's message of the gospel and we had special ministries by the missionaries from Thailand and they had also given special lectures and we have provided strong spiritual motivation to the local pastors emphasizing the three-old commitment and the team of three and the three movements centered around our covenantal challenge in the evening through the evangelism conferences. We conveyed the message that Baliyaman Church will become a partisan of Indonesian evangelization must stand. We are examining the words of the book of Acts and currently we are looking into the book of Acts chapter 29. And for this mission field, it is that even due to COVID, after COVID, there is about a hundred congregation. But because the facility is so small after going to the regional camp, she said she was in tears and having 
and giving offering. She wanted for it to have expansion of its buildings, being able to be the courtyard of the Gentiles' posterity and the two three seven nations. So listening to. What had happened for the camp? I heard that the young adults were of a great help, sleeping two, three hours, and the elders were so touched. And the son Handoksen, he did not go to. His honeymoon, but they have come here and participated in the camp. And upon the time of the honeymoon, where they should be hugging each other and looking at each other, they were looking onto God and sleeping two, three hours for the camp. And this is a great faith. It is a guaranteed blessing. Looking to the book of Acts every Sunday. Right now, we are writing the book of Acts twenty-nine. Today's passage. Specifically, discusses the establishment of the church in the mission field, the Antioch Church. And God used the Antioch Church as a platform to launch the advance missions to the Gentiles. And in Acts chapter thirteen, we can see that the Antioch Church was the first Christian church in history to commission Paul and Barnabas as the missionaries for the Gentiles. It was a church that faithfully embodied the covenant of missions left by Jesus after his resurrection and ascension: go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, and make disciples of all nations. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It is this word that God had left us. It's not a choice of whether you can do it or not. Oh, because I'm so busy. Because I have so much to do. This is in what you have as the priority, and that's the heavenly mandate. And the camp team right now. There is no one who is well off financially, having so much leisure. As if we are coming here as a trip, they know that it is their heavenly calling, heavenly mandate, calling and mission. Upon hardships, paying the missions fee. What is going to be remained? In recordance is only the camp. You being able to pay for the dinner here, it's going to be in history. That's going to be remained. Who does not know to go have fun? But being able to give this time for the camp, for the gospelization of the two, three, seven nations, it's not a choice, but it's the absolute mission. And that's why we have the word. May all the nations be possessed as the covenant, and bear the witness of the gospel, saying to all creation, to all the nations, to the ends of the earth. Amen. We may have many thoughts, but only what is remained is that 
If it is not the will of God, it will not be fulfilled. So some people say, I prayed about it, but it's nothing. Then what does that mean? It means that it was not fitting to God's plan. Even if we call on to God, if it is not fitting to God, then it is a lie. There are many kind people. The Pharisees. The Catholics. But they are not fitting to the will of God, I'm sorry to say. Although it may not be a very good content. For those who are living according to the will of God, God will bless. Like so, when the covenant of missions is realized in the field of life, we will stand as Christians as the title of today's message. And this is important so we may listen carefully. The disciples of the Antioch church in today's scriptures was called Christians for the first time in history. In Greek, Christians are called Christianos which means a person who belongs to Christ, a person who lives for Christ, a person who resembles Christ. That is who Christians are. It's as if we're seeing Christ. Generally, the meaning for the word Christian we use now is this Christian. The meaning of Christianity in this era is greatly fading. So non-believers, they don't look at it in a very good way. It is acknowledged as a person who just goes to church. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Many people say that. When you are born in a country with a Christian national background, you naturally think of yourself as a Christian without really meeting Jesus Christ. When you are born in a family who believes in Jesus, you say that you're a Christian, even if you don't really meet Christ. It's like that in Europe. Even if you go to Philippines, it's like that. They call themselves Christians. They naturally think that way. However, the nickname of a Christian that the disciples of the Antioch Church had meant was completely different from this. That is why they call Christians this way is because they were crazy about Jesus. They went all in within Jesus Christ. It's not just saying, I go to church. Those who are crazy about Jesus you must be able to listen to that. Saying, oh, that person is completely crazy. Oh, that person is crazy about church. Being able to say, oh, that person is crazy about Jesus. That is the Christian that is mentioned in the Bible. When I was a deacon, when I was an elder, I heard that many times. Oh, that person is completely crazy about church. All my friends said that. Oh, do you not know anything else besides church? You fool. You should be able to drink with us and have fun. Life is short. Only being able to see Jesus. Those who risk their lives upon Jesus, they are the Christians. If you're not crazy about Jesus, then you cannot hear that you are a Christian. Right now, the meaning of that has greatly changed. That's why today's title is A Christian Who Is Like a Christian. Because we must live this life. In the name of the Lord, through today's sermon, I bless all you unbelievers that you'll stand as a true Christian who acts like a Christian and be the witness of the transcendental blessing of possessing all the nations. Number one, the mindset of missions. 
verses 19 to 20 reads, Now those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Messenia, Cyprus, and Antioch spreading the word among the Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. In Acts 8.1, as Stephen's martyrdom led to the full-fledged persecution in Jerusalem, all the apostles scattered. In fact, it had become the time to be scattered, but if you're complacent, you can see that God had forced to scatter. What does that mean? God is alive, and the Holy Spirit is working, but why are they persecuting us? No, it is not so. It is a time schedule to be scattered. If you receive the Holy Spirit, then it is the time schedule to preach the gospel to all nations. The way to be scattered was persecution. And because of the persecution, as Stephen was killed, everyone was so shocked that they scattered. In the walk of faith, it's not that we must say, oh, we like it here and sit there. Because then God will scatter you. That's why for the church, if you don't do missions, then they will be scattered. There will be church in the church and there will be problems. And the church will be crumbled down. But if you do missions, then God will protect you. According to today's scripture, these scattered people came to Cyprus and Antioch to preach the gospel. An Antioch that is importantly mentioned in the Bible is the Antioch of Pisidia and the Antioch of Syria. The Antioch of Pisidia is the area shown in Acts chapter 13 where Paul and Barnabas conducted missions in Antioch of Pisidia after Cyprus. But the Antioch in today's scripture is the Antioch of Syria, and Syria is located about 480 kilometers north of Jerusalem. Antioch was the third largest city in the Roman Empire after Rome and Alexandria, with a population of 500,000 at the time. In verse 20 from our script, We can see that the scattered ones had come to Antioch and did what was unique, preaching the word only to the Jews. When we saw last time, Peter put aside his own legalistic prejudice and stereotypes and preached the gospel for the first time to Cornelius, a Gentile, and the Gentile Pentecost was achieved in the field. The news of this amazing work of the Holy Spirit and the Gentiles had received the word reached upon the apostles and brothers in Jerusalem. See, the Gentiles now preached the gospel because they received the gospel as well. Unfortunately, there were those who criticized Peter upon his return to Jerusalem, saying, How can Peter go to Cornelius? Peter was put on trial. Why did you sleep and eat at the house of a Gentile? He was put on to trial. The Jerusalem church. Acts 11, 2 refers to them as the circumcisers, meaning they were from the condescending of Judaism. They have become a child of God, receiving salvation, being Christians, but who were they? They were circumcised. They were of the Judaism church. In Acts 6, 7, a large group of priests returned who were the who were the Pharisees? They were the leaders of the Jews. They had great legalism. Despite having been exposed to the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
They condemned those who had not yet broken the old frame of law. So they thought, how can you eat and sleep at a Gentile's house? Those who are not of the only gospel, they criticize and say pessimistic words. They may not seem wrong, but they are wrong. So the idea that only the circumcised were God's people was not lost on them. You have to be circumcised in order to believe in Jesus and believe in God. It is their standard, their law, being bounded by their standard and their thoughts. And Peter gives them a detailed explanation of the situation of the field and their convinced of God's work. But it's that even if Peter experienced this, he did not hold on to the covenant because he should have said, hey, didn't God say to preach all the gospel to all the nations? And if he said that, they would have been quiet, but he gave an excuse saying, Oh, this is what happened then. And God sent me to Cornelius and unfortunately I had to go and he laid all the explanations of the situation. He definitely experienced this, but Peter didn't learn much. So because he was being condemned, if it was me, I would have crushed them. But their acceptance was temporary. It wasn't true acceptance. Because the great disciple, Peter said it, they never got over their old frames. Those who are from Greek, those who learned a lot, the disciples of law, those who are successful. They're not very able to follow the church. They have their own standards, not knowing the taste of the gospel. And later, to the church that Paul had raised, they come and they question who is circumcised or not. It's those who receive salvation, but who had no changed natures. They're in the same denomination of the pastor, elders, but they do not know the gospel. Isn't that the church right now, not knowing the gospel? Because they're unable to taste this. They don't know what this means. And later, the Gentile churches continued to stir up the they continued to stir up the circumcision controversy controversy and diluted the gospel. Our text says that those who were scattered in Antioch preached only to the Jews. We should be able to see how Satan has set up the old natures for the solid watchtower in the field to keep us stuck in the old frames. However, in verse 20, we see that some of the scattered ones had the missionary mindset of Acts 1, 8 and preached the Lord Jesus to the Gentiles. Verse 21. The, evid the evidence in the field was staggering. With a missionary mindset, they proclaimed the gospel of the true Jesus Christ, saying Jesus is the Christ, the answer to all problem, the solution to every problem in our lives. And the work of the Holy Spirit with the hand of the Lord was on the field. And many Gentiles believed and returned to the Lord, and the church of the Antioch church was born. 
The Church of the Antioch Church was not founded by one man. It was built because a group of mission-minded people, known as Gentiles, stood up together. More than the people who went to church for a long time. I think there are more charismatic to the second parable son because they're more pure because they are thankful for the grace of God. They're overwhelmed with the heart of how can a person like me be here with that pure heart. They are the one who built the Antioch church. They are so pure. Full of devotion, and that's why they heard this. We must let down our prejudice. Will the Muslims receive the gospel? Will the Balinese Hindus come back to the Lord after I preach the gospel? It seems like that person is far off than me. What if I preach the gospel to that person and are relationship deteriorates. This is all the partisan that Satan has raised. The prejudice. We have to get rid of all these thoughts. What was the title of last week's sermon? Prejudice out. Amen? You must not lose sight of What is this? We should not let it be able to be looked over. We have to get rid of our prejudice stereotypes until the day I die. I was telling my wife. You have to get rid of that. And she was saying, you have to get rid of that. And I acknowledge that. I have to get rid of that too. It's not saying you are wrong and I am right. I have to change and reform. And you have to change and reform. And you have to have prejudice out. This prejudice, it is quite scary. If you don't break it, then for the rest of your life, you will not be able to receive answers to prayer topics. Even if the church says that we must do missions, you don't even think about it. What is that you must not lose sight of? It's that all people must be evangelized. In verse Timothy 2, 4, Apostle Paul emphasizes, Who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? The walk of faith is putting practice to what God wants, not what I want. So living our faith is about what God wants us to do. And you came here to Bali because of that, because God wanted you to come. The world comes to Bali for traveling and tourism, but we came as evangelists of the gospel. That is life's greatest blessing, greatest answer and greatest source of blessing. Yes, we'll finish the camp and we'll have tours and we'll swim. But what is that? It is the blessing that is added on, the additional blessings. But the main subject is the camp. And after that, we can have tour. Because we have to know and see what Bali is. So God will give it to us. In our spirit and in truth. He will fill our needs and give us healing. And be able to make us enjoy it. And what is that? That is the blessing of evangelism camp. So I've experienced it and enjoyed this for 20 years. So, with the standard of missions camp, 
there will be existing mission sites, but various other types of camps will be conducted as well, like Josh and Caleb who went on spying around Canaan, the spy camp for new mission sites will be held. A pioneer in camp will also be held to establish new partisan of missions. I even heard it today. Maurice and Chung Wen-sik, missionary, went to Singapore and to all the people there, they gave the message. And in a site where over 10,000 people came, he spoke English and Chinese. And he was able to go to China and give a sermon. And he, and they met with them and said, "Oh, we were going to do something with Yuan Church." And missionary Chung Mishiki was in Pakistan and Malaysia, and he was continuing to send pictures and. prayer topics and pictures and I would say I'm praying I'm praying until the point where it would be too much and Pastor Maurice was called and now they met a pastor who was very renowned in that region and it was an update for today so what does that mean this my camp and pioneering camp and the multi-ethnic camp it's the same thing there are 237 countries around the world so there are endless numbers of missions to do in the future so may everyone take care of your health as the heavenly mission we are given is big and amazing I bless you in the name of the Lord that may all members of Yohan Church to have declared mindset of missions at sea is a two, three, seven nations to extend as the field missionary starting from our daily lives. Number two, trained disciples. Verses Gentiles returned to Antioch, the Church of Jerusalem sent Barnabas to spiritually raise them. Barnabas was thrilled to see God's amazing grace in the field and firmly established the members of the Antioch Church upon the Gospel. However, the fruits of the revival continued beyond Barnabas's capacity. So to the person who has come to his mind was Paul, because he thought, I cannot do it alone anymore. So Paul was currently in his hometown in Tarsus at that time. And according to Acts chapter 9, the death squad of the Jews tried to kill Paul who had been to Jerusalem, and the apostles took Paul to Tarsus to seek revenge. Verses 25 to 26. It was important to note that the disciples of the Antioch Church were called Christians after they were taught earnestly by Paul and Barnabas for a year. What did these two teach? What did they teach? It was the Word of God. What did Apostle Paul, who stayed in Tarnus, do? He must have preached the Gospel 
and approached all the words of the Old Testament he had learned from the perspective of Christ, and all the questions that he had was unraveled. The message of the Old Testament. He was being able to see it from the perspective of Christ. He saw the 66 books of the Bible from the perspective of Christ. So Paul learned the law under Gamaliel, who was known as the best of his time. So compared to current times, it would be someone from Harvard or from Seoul National University. And he looked into this vast knowledge of the Old Testament with the Gospel, and a whole new world of biblical interpretation was opened. So it's like a person in seminary PhD, maybe having five PhDs of different sites. And he discovered the essential meaning of the Word of God, that Jesus is the Christ. So it was a new world that had opened for him. Jesus is the Christ. The Word of God is essentially what this means. And you re realize the Gospel of the Three only is the Mount of Mount Calvary, Mount of Olives, and Mark's Upper Room had opened. So he had so much to say. He had so many things to say, being filled with passion. He went on an intense training at the Antioch church for a year, and they had tasted the words that was sweeter than honey and pine honey. And when Paul delivered the word of God and taught them, Barnabas served them with the ministry of comfort. Lives of the Antioch church members changed day by day as the ministry of the consolation, which helped people rise upon the word and healed the hidden scars, having synergy effects with Paul's ministry. They had grown into a life that resembles Jesus enough to be called as Christians when non believers had looked at them. And the trained disciple was who they were. A disciple who is trained. So a disciple is a trained person and it refers to a person who follows the word. The person who is like Christ. The meaning of a disciple is a person who follows the follower. Fellow believers may be a disciple. We do Tuesday conference once a month in Tepyeong in Korea and the parking lots there are filled. But is it that they go there for their church to have revival? No, it has nothing to do with that. It's to receive training. They go online at four or five in the morning for training. How hard is the message? It's that the pastors think will our congregation be able to understand this, but they're so happy. They're underneath the stage. And there is no room because everyone is sitting there. Because there are so many seeds that are put out. They have so much passion to receive training. It's a seminar where it's held 
two times a month. And it's online where people are saying, oh, may you be able to sell your tickets if you're unable to go. They're disciples. The disciples who ask the gospel. The characteristic of them is that they like training. Training. Yes, work is important. But those who receive training, what is training? It is the life of following the word. It's not following my efforts, my emotions, but following the word. So the meaning of a disciple is the one who follows the word. Follow me. In other words, it is the essence of the word. Following only Jesus Christ. It's not saying this or that upon other words, it's following the word. The platform of the walk of faith is the word of God. You must be able to know what God says in order to do your walk of faith. Right now we're doing the three movements and a team of three. And what is in the forefront? It is what we prioritize it is the new believers. It's that when we are nurtured by the word of God through worship, we break the old frames and equip ourselves with the new frame. So as children of God, worship is what we must prioritize in life. Worship is something that only the saved children of God can give through the atonement of Jesus Christ on the cross. The barrier between God and sinful humans have been broken down. So worship is moving in front of God by relaying on Jesus Christ. And what the word of God proclaimed during worship is firmly established as a baptism within me. Growth occurs and influence is exerted. All is solved within worship. If you succeed in worship, all is solved. Why do you worry, have worries, concerns? It's that you failed in worship. It's that you did not hold on to the covenant in worship. If you succeed in worship, it's I'm okay, you're okay, everybody's okay. It is heaven in this world. That's why we must depend on Jesus Christ and go out in front of God. So upon the word that is being proclaimed in Jesus, may it be within us as the bartizan within us. Then you'll be able to grow and have spiritual growth and give spiritual influence. For those who don't have the word, they are unable to give the spiritual influence. Matthew 28, 19-20 Jesus emphasizes this while resurrecting and ascending to heaven. So it is the core of the gospel that Jesus taught. It is teaching and keeping it. It is training in the word. So even if you go to church for decades, there are people who don't have the word. Isn't it so strange? You can watch a movie. There are people who are able to explain that even mimicking the characters but if we're questioned about the word we're unable to say it what did we learn is a sermon less than the word it's that that's why we have forum it's that you're able to see your spiritual self if you're able to have forum that person is awake but for those who don't hold on to the word, they can't have for them because they have not followed the power of the word. Don't try to do anything else. Just do word for them. Have for them with the pulpit because our memory is limited. Did may be able to have forum with each other and be able to challenge each other 
before my wife is a witness of this. We would have forum all night long and then we would have forum and leave. It would not be tiring. And then we would go to work. Having a word for him, knowing the deep depth of that, especially the elders, we would be able to gather and do it. Last week's pulpit. As we're having forum and having coffee together, having fellowship, may you be able to do that? And then you'll be able to diagnose your spiritual state. So we're also going to do media missions. Media evangelism is underway as the RUTC broadcasting with Pastor Marcus weekly Yewan pulpit broadcasting in Indonesia. Zaya TV, more TV channel corporation with Pastor Reza from Malang Shakina Church, who is conducting broadcasting ministry and etc. And together in the future, we'll establish an RTS in Bali to nurture train disciples for the evangelization in Indonesia. So it's that it is the ministry of teaching the word of God. It is the core of the word of God. And what is that? It is the gospel of the three onlys. And depending on that, we're able to do that. Upon all the scattered churches of Yohan Church, upon the trainings, may be the main figures of 237 missions. This is the conclusion. There's a saying people have a different class. The standard is different. Class means hierarchy, level, and etc. And the word class is different contains the meaning of different class and that the level is different. In the case of soccer player Sun Young Min who is playing in the English Premier League, he is called the world class player. The world class means that it has a world class level. Spiritually, the disciples of the Antioch Church have lived a different life. It was a spiritual world class. We also have to live a life that is a Christian, a different class. Today's passage is the team of three in the team and the three movements. The person who has a different class. So for Yewan Church, even the headquarters acknowledges that they're different, that their oneness, the remnants are different. So upon those who train, the Yewan Church is always in the forefront. They always have glistening eyes. And they listen to the word. 
all the people from our Jews they gather, and when they are questioned where they are from, they say that they are from your church. The DNA is like me, so they are not bored. Because if they're like that in our church, then they cannot survive. The class is different. What is that path? It is the team of three and the three movements. So when you go all in and focus in this, you'll be the spiritual world class. So I bless you in the name of the Lord. That may be the spiritual world class. May you say it with me, I am the spiritual world class. Amen. May it be able to happen according to your to the word. It is standing twenty four hours with the pulpit as Christians who are, like Christians, the spiritual world class that creates vital dynamics in the world and be the evangelism summit disciples. May you be used by God. May you pray together, dear Father God, starting from today. Like the believers of Antioch, may they be the Christians who are like Christians, being of a different standard, having the mind of a Christian, being able to take part in training. So may they be able to have knowledge that only the will of God will be accomplished and be the people of the word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, Amen.